when you walk into a, a home that, that we've cleaned the ducts in, it's, there's a wow factor. You go, wow, boy, it smells good in here. Boy, it smells clean in here. That's because all the air fresheners are plugged in the walls. Uh, no, that's because there are no <laughs> air fresheners in the walls. <laughs> It has a it has a lightness to it and a and, and, it and smells a, fresh. Yes, when, without the air fresheners, because air right. fresheners and really we, don't smell fresh. No. That's that chemical poison. Right, anyways, we, right? we all know they're terrible. So um, that's one of the other things that, that we do on every job. We we demand. So this. so you should allocate some funds to to clean the house and sanitize the house, clean the ducts, right. and then as plan B precautionary for future potential problems to to run a camera through the underground because yes. if it's if it's slow and sluggish or backed up by silt or tree roots right. they're gonna they could have a nightmare they could ruin yes. everything in their basement right exactly and the mold starts growing right. and the sewers start backing up now they got not now they got bacteria problems too now right if the sewers back up it's a exactly. whole other problem it's, yes and they can avert all of that by simply checking the system. And so a lot of people don't want to do it because when they're going around looking at these bank owned houses, they don't own it yet. And they don't realize that after they hire the, the home inspector to come in, then that's not the end of the story. Then you've got to hire the mold inspector to come in and then you have to hire the water guy to come in. And check the, and, the camera. And camera, the, and camera the everything. And it's not, I mean, it's not prohibitively expensive. It's, 250 bucks for the first hour. For the camera? Yeah. But you, you should do that because it's way better to spend $250 to check it out. It could be more spend, though, right? You may have to dig a hole to get to the pipes in the older homes. It's 250 bucks for the first hour and it's 125 for any additional so hour. So for five, 600 bucks, we could be pretty safe. Yes. And then if, well, you, and then if you've got a water jet or snake, that's extra. However, yeah. Would you rather spend two fifty, or would you rather spend twenty five thousand oh. when you've got the problem? It, and that blows every. How much does it cost to clean the ducts? About. I mean, I've well, heard people. I've heard people go to homes, and it's two hundred bucks, and then they hear six hundred bucks, and they hear eight hundred bucks. Well, we're going to hire a two hundred dollar guy. Of course. Well, you might as well give the guy the money at the door and say, "Have a nice day." <laughs> the two hundred dollars. Yeah, the two hundred dollars. Just give him the money. Give him the money, and, and that's it. And have a nice day. Because he's probably going to create more of a problem in your house than he... Than so the Twitter face. guy, what does he do? He, he, I, who I'll, knows? Who knows what they do or don't do? You can't do it for 200 bucks. You cannot. What's the average price? We have a minimum just to come out and, and do it, and that's 300 bucks in any house. Well, that's not too bad. But it's it, we charge by the, by the opening, and so it's 25 bucks an opening. Well, you know, if you've got a big house, it's a $1,000 job. If you've got forty openings, for example, in a four hundred thousand or four thousand square foot McMansion, you know you're going to have to pay a thousand bucks. Generally, on average, the average two thousand square foot home has it's somewhere between four and six hundred dollars to clean the decks. Well, that's actually that's not that's not too bad. No. Right. I mean, that's they're there for a while, right? And what do they do? They scrub it. They wash it. No, no. You're a. You're not allowed to put anything in the ducts anymore. You're not. No disinfectants. No. No chemicals, no in, the chemicals ducts. in the ducts. No, we want a chemical-free job. Mold does not generally grow on metal anyway. Mold grows in the dust. That's not in the metal. So, he hooks up at the at, at the base at the furnace and the cold air returns and at the supply lines, and they clean from the register down. And they use an air whip. Oh, so they actually bring a... a oh, yeah, they go to take a whip all the way through. Meanwhile, they have 4,000 cubic feet a minute sucking this duct. So they're sucking right. the air while they're whipping right. it. Right. So they're pulling all the debris. Oh. It's just Everything like, goes into a filter. Oh, okay. That way you're, you're, you're totally capturing the uh, what's there, and you're not cross-contaminating the whole house. So these guys just show up and like... They hook up this fan and they blow air. They're, <laughs> they're not doing anything. It's a joke. And even the uh, even the truck mounted units are, are not as effective as, as this. And by the way, NADCA, finally, the National Association of Duck Cleaners. NADCA, National Association Na of Duck, Duck Cleaners. Cleaners. 
called our industrial hygienist a couple of months ago and said that they were very seriously considering changing their specifications because they had become aware of the fact that when you're cleaning the tubes, you're not doing the whole job, and they really were trying to incorporate uh, air scrubbing into their specification, and that's something that we feel is going to be changed in the next year or so. Meanwhile, we've been doing this for 10 years. And air scrubbing is something that you put in the house. No, no, this, the unit does it, it's all the same unit. It's a double-sided HEPA filter with 4,000 cubic foot a minute power. So you're not only sucking the ducts, but you're purging all the air in the house through this filter. So all the air in the house is you're sucking is being purged over and over and over again through these HEPA filters. And they're cleaning it. And they're, it's right. And HEPA, high efficient particle air, right? 99.7 of all the particulate, this special filter. And one micron, yes. Microns, right. Yes. So it's a highly effective system. Uh, as I said, we've been with it for 10 years now. We're not about to change. They're about to come up to our standards. We're not going down to theirs. Now, I, I have a question. When you get your calls, I mean, you said 40% of your business is, right. is vacant homes. Is it, do you get the calls before the people move in, before the contractor shows up to rehab, or after the people move in complaining? No. Uh, well, all of the above, but uh, we normally, now it's to the point where we're quite well known in the rehab arena, and we get the calls from the inspector that goes in to the house originally, and he says, I want you to give me, I, you see, there, there's a formula that he has that all these costs have to work within the parameters of the loan with the customer's ability to get credit, with the bank's uh, willingness to extend more credit for the fix-up. And so there's a formula, and before, they've gotten it now to the point that before these people just make the applications, the, the inspector puts together the package and sees whether the formula will fit. And he normally tells me, well, we, you know, the jobs aren't that expensive. They'll run from 2200 to 5000 depending on the size of the house. But that you're doing a lot for that. Oh yeah. I mean you're, you're that includes a duct cleaning? Oh yes. That includes a sewer camera? No, no, the sewer camera is extra. Um, we do all the inside work. You know, the duct cleaning and all the, uh, the mold remo removal, you know, for that kind of money. And as I said, every surface in the house gets touched. Walls, floors, ceilings. We don't leave anything unturned. And then we, we test it at the end, and we show that there's, you know... The and when you say you test it, you like do one of those mold air tests? <clears throat> yes, that's what you're breathing. And, of course, we remove all the visible mold. You, you're not going to... We, we peroxide all the surfaces or bioclean them and have a vacuum them. So, yeah, and it works, and it works very well. And it's worked for hundreds of homes. The HUD people don't recognize mold yet. They recognize it, but they have not mandated mold cleanup. Uh, we have spoken. We're talking one, about Fannie Mae. No HUD. 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 So there is no uh, HUD's not mandated to 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 clean that up. The only time that thing will be cleaned up if if they take a if they buy a HUD home, and they finance it through an FHA two hundred three K, then it will be cleaned up. But as far as HUD's concerned, they've attacked mold and they or they've attacked radon lead. sorry lead and they've attacked asbestos but it's too dynamic a problem for HUD to deal with right now and so they're not dealing with it so so these so we're talking literally a lot of people buy homes and they're all redone and the home inspectors come in and there's nothing wrong because they're not looking at right. what we're talking about and all of a sudden they realize there could be something wrong Maybe they're getting sick or they're sneezing. Right. So now those people, there's probably a lot of those people. So how do you do? What do you do for that? What do, how do you handle that, those people? We come in and inspect the house and do an air test, and and we, you see, there are two parts to, to an inspection. An air test doesn't tell you everything, and a visual inspection doesn't tell you everything. So you've got to do two. You've got to visually look. <coughs> 
and you look for the building science issues, of course, the moisture issues, <coughs> and then you do the testing to see what the air quality tells you. <coughs> and the combination of those two findings will determine whether or not we're really talking about a legitimate... So, so if you have, problem. like, you could, the, the house visually looks clean, and let's say they, in this case, they clean the ducts, and the air test comes back high, more mold inside than outside, right. and high counts. So then, then you, then you're going to go look at maybe some forensic issues like hidden mold behind insulation. Yes. Rarely do we find that though. Oh, so it's not common. No. Um, and we don't even, we don't even do the inside outside thing. We rather, there are things called winter rules. Winter rules say 2,000 counts and less are okay. More than 2,000 counts, you better look and see what's going on. And these are counts meaning mold spore mold numbers. Spores, mount, yeah, counts per cubic so meter. So 2,000 mold spores per cubic and, meter. And greater, maybe, not a, maybe a problem. Maybe a problem, you better look. Sometimes it's not a problem. Sometimes this, this, all it is is a plant in the, you know, a plant in the ladies' can do atrium, that. sure. And these are. Mold this. This much mold in a house can upset a quality test. <laughs> so. And these are air tests. They call, and we're talking about we have. They're called non-viable non air cell tests. Now they have the other ones called viable, which you get the petri. What do you think? Petri it's dishes. A, you, you grow the mold. Right. We're yeah. not talking about those. We're talking about the the, the normal standard right. inspector type test called an air cell. Yes. All right. And so two thousand is bad and above. Not bad. It's room for investigation. Okay. Um, that's kind of the level we work to, which is a lot better than saying, "Well, the in, uh, the outdoor counts like in the fall, for example, the outdoor counts are really elevated. It may be fifteen, sixteen thousand counts in the air right now. That's a lot. And that's a lot. In the winter, there's it's a lot in the house. In the winter, there's hardly any. In the spring, the pollen and stuff. Especially gets, in the snow uh, on the ground, right? Right. But, you know, if you do the inside-outside in the fall and it's fifteen or 16,000 counts and you've got 14,000 counts in the house... It's not okay. It's not okay. But if a lot of guys say, oh, it's lower than the outside, so it's okay. Well, it's not. That's it's still Very too Very interesting. Hard. It's still too hard. <coughs> So we work all the time to the, in, in, to the, to the, what they call the winter rules, and that's 2,000 counts or less, and that's what we do our remediation to. And, and, you know, we just throw that outside thing kind of out the window. You know, sometimes, I mean, we'll do it if, if uh, the cases are going to court, for example, or, or that sort of thing, and, and we'll do an outside test just to show. But we don't feel that that's really too rel as relevant as everybody makes it out to be. We'd rather just make sure... So you're like, you're, you're right. using 2,000. Right. And now for a house, let's say they had like... 50 plants, right. then you may take in consideration, all right, okay. If they have a furry Fido, you know, who goes in and out, and, you know, he's out in the back porch and running around the bushes and coming in. And, I mean, there are a lot of those Fido? guys. That's <laughs> a <laughs> cat, you know. Point is, is that you've got to, life is, you know, life is not a statistic. It, it, life is life, and, and right. so you, you've got to, Taking that all that into consideration, but generally, what do you think of? I see a lot of uh, a lot of mold companies. They'll go into a house and and they'll take these these tape lifts and they'll just like right. They'll go to a piece of mold and they'll take a tape lift right. and send it to a lab. Right. And like oh man, and there's a million counts, and they're and the people freak out. Right. Like well, I say clean it up. Find out if there's any moisture behind that panel in your drywall that's making that. But thing that, that, that that tape lift test on that mold could have been from 50 years ago. Sure. From is. a roof leak or an ice dam. Absolutely. And it's not even growing right. unless you have humidity, right? Right. So that test is kind of worthless. <clears throat> the test helps you verify. We do tape lifts in the event that there is an allergic or uh, an immune challenged client, and they they are known to be allergic to mold. We will tape lift to verify that that mold that's on the wall is what they're allergic to. 
and it's for the doctor's benefit and the, for the client's so benefit. So they can, whatever they find they're allergic to, you can find it, and if it's on that tape lift, right. it could very it's, well be a contributor to exactly. their problem. Okay. The bottom line is, you know, the state of New York came out three years ago, and they led the nation back in the 90s with the New York Protocol, which was the first nationally accepted mold remediation plan. The governor of New York said three years ago, all right, I've got a lot of pressure here to, to make another statement and to do another proactive thing. And so we're going to do a report on what, how much mold and what molds are good for you or bad for you and how much. And they got all these doctors and scientists and toxologists together and they did all this research and they published a 140-page report. <laughs> the New York State Guidelines, is that what we're talking about? This is the new New York State Guidelines, which this is a report that was to tell you how much mold is bad and how much mold is good and what kinds, etc. I had a guy, a loan officer, tell me the other day that there's only five kinds of molds that affect you and everything else is just harmless. Well, the state of New York